Recently, the USDA changed the plant hardiness zone map for the United States. So what does that mean for you? Not much. First, you need to understand what the zone map even tells you. The only information the zone map gives you is the average extreme cold temperatures your winters may reach. And this lets you determine if plants that are perennials in warm areas should survive the winter in your area. For instance, if you want to grow an orange tree but you live in zone 7 or lower, the tree probably won't make it through the winter because it is a tropical plant and is not cold hardy. So planting an orange grove in Kansas is probably not a good idea. That is all the zone map tells you. What plants are likely to survive your winter. And not everyone's zone changed, only about half of the United States. If you would like to check what zone you are in, I will leave a link to the USDA interactive map in the description below. Just plug in your zip code and it will tell you your zone. My zone changed from 6B to 7A, which means my determined average low winter temperature changed about 5 degrees from negative 5 Fahrenheit to 0 Fahrenheit. Will this affect what I plant in my garden? Not really. All of the fruit trees that I'm able to grow in zone 7A are also hardy in zone 6B. And the pepper plants will still not be perennial in zone 7A, but I can grow them as an annual every year. Welcome to the old Mayfield Place. I'm Snow the Farmer's Wife and I teach you to be more self-sufficient in so many ways, such as growing your own food, using herbal medicine, and preserving food for long-term storage. So this zone change isn't going to affect anyone much. And while your zone will tell you what perennial plants you can grow successfully, your average frost dates are more important to consider when planning your annual garden. Average first and last frost dates tell you the length of your growing season so that you can determine if what you want to plant has time to produce a harvest. If you have a 90 day growing season but want to grow peppers, which require 150 to 180 days to harvest, you may have difficulty growing them in your area. And tomatoes can take up to 120 days to produce. So knowing your first and last frost dates can help you make wise decisions on what plants you should give precious space in your garden. Certain varieties of vegetables have been developed to produce a harvest in a shorter period of time. So do your research and choose those that are appropriate for your growing period. You can find the days to harvest on the back of the seed packets or in the seed catalogs. Choose varieties that will do well in your area. Other important factors that you need to consider when planning your garden include your altitude, the average yearly precipitation in your area, how windy it is, and your particular microclimate. Extremes can affect which plants will thrive in your garden, so you need to take all of these factors into consideration. But unless you are hoping to plant a citrus grove and you've been recently changed from zone 3A to 8B, the zone change won't affect your planning very much. And the change in the zone classification should only be one factor you need to consider. Remember, this is only an average, not an absolute. You could have much warmer or much colder weather in any given year. So use this as a guideline, not as a rule. Thank you for stopping by the Old Mayfield Place today. Stay self-sufficient, choose your plants wisely, and have a blessed week.